Hey Sainers, welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel. Welcome to the round 10 preview. We've got the GWS Giants Sunday back in our usual slot, 4.40 p.m. Away again, second game interstate in a row. We've got them at Giants Stadium in New South Wales. Been a bad week, you know, we've um, still a bit sore after Sunday. Bad performance, but we're getting some players back. We'll talk about that as well and what the potential ins and outs will be. But first on the Giants, they are sitting, where are they sitting? 15th on the ladder with the three wins, 85.4%. I'm just looking over their fixtures now, and I think the last game they played against Collingwood, they lost by 65 points. That was their first game that they'd lost. I guess the first game they've been involved in where the margin, the final margin, was upwards of 21 points. I think prior to that, every game, they were either ahead or within 20 points. So they've played a lot of tight games. They beat Sydney by a point. They lost to the Bulldogs by 15, lost to Brisbane by 21. They beat the Hawks, only lost to Essendon by 13, and lost to Carlton by 10. They did lose to the Eagles by 19, which was pretty disappointing, and they beat Adelaide in round one by 16 points. So their form, I mean, they're sitting 15th, but I guess when you look at their fixtures and who they've played and and um, their results in general, they haven't really been that far off it. So this is going to be a bit more difficult than maybe what some Saners think. I personally think this is just one of those games where regardless of how the opposition's going, we need to, we need to go there and I guess find our identity again. You know, the first six weeks, we were the talk of the town. Everyone was very impressed with the way we were playing. And the last couple of weeks, you know, we, we haven't been great. Let's let's face it, you know, we beat we beat North and that was a very ugly game and um, we probably deserved to lose that the way we played. And then we got what we deserved the week later against the Crows. We lost by, you know, 52 points and it could have been a hell of a lot more. They were that much better than us. Um, we've lost that edge in the middle. We've lost that speed, that dare to take the ball on take the game on and then obviously the most notable thing is our physicality that's completely dropped off so you know for me this this game it's it's obviously important to look at GWS they've got some strengths obviously Toby Green is going to be back in this week from what I've seen um, that's kind of the main in for them and I think we when we played him last year correct me if I'm wrong but I swear that was the game where he returned as well and um, he was very good that day we still got the win but he was you know he could have been the difference and Again, in this sort of game, if we're not on, considering how easily Adelaide scored and how our defense looked last week, um, we're going to hope that they're going to get back to their best. And whether we go with Pato again this week or Jimmy Webster, I think Jimmy Webster is the perfect fit. And Liam Stocker to tag team Toby Green in the forward line. Um, and then obviously when he goes into the midfield, it's a whole different game. On the flip side for us, our midfield's not in the best of form. Obviously our Ruckman is in Ron Marshall. He's been great all season, but our mids need to really pick up. Jack Steele should be right to play. Seb Ross, Brad Crouch, these sort of guys had big, you know, big games last week um, in terms of numbers, but probably didn't impact the game the way we would want. Um, and hopefully Jade Gresham will be back and give us a bit more zip because I think we lacked that big time last week. That just sort of unpredictable sort of play. Everyone, Brad Crouch, Ross, and Steele, very one way sort of play, very one speed type of player. Uh, but Gresh gives us something different, and obviously Mitch Owens. Uh, might get a bit more of a stint in the middle as well in the ruck because we've got Max King back, which is going to be great. Well, it's not locked in, but we can be pretty certain that Max King's going to play. Um, you'd imagine Marcus Winhager would come in as well. I think there's a couple of players there. Bytel, uh, I think he only had the four. He came off again as the sub and only got a little bit of the game, so really hard to judge his performance. So it'd be stiff, but you'd imagine that maybe he makes way. Filippo could become the sub. We talked about it on the potty. I think he's due a rest, uh, and then he can come back fresh against the Hawks, and then we've got the bye. So I think that's a perfect way to manage players like him uh, because he's a high-octane player. You know, he's flying for everything. He's getting hit hard. He's not playing a cheap outside game where he can play the whole season in his first year. I think we're going to have to manage him at some point. I think just before the bye, um, two consecutive games on the road, I think might be a smart way to do it. Give Windy some more time. Bytel maybe could stay the sub, depending on if you want to put Filippo there. And uh, Webster, Gresh, come back in as well for me. So the key thing for me is we're first for kicks. Just looking at it here, we're first for kicks, second for handles, obviously first for disposals. When you're first for kicks, first for disposals in particular, but you're second 
for clangers is a problem. If you're getting the ball more than anyone, but you're almost stuffing it up more than anyone, second most in the league, that's not a good combination because that just shows that our disposal efficiency lately has been so poor. And last week, it was just no exception. We were so bad with the football in hand. The first six weeks, we were hitting targets. And when we made mistakes in the first six weeks, our defense was set. Our, de- our mids ran back hard and they just made it ugly for the team on the turnover and That's why we were number one on turnover to score, but also number one the other way in terms of avoiding a score when we did turn it over with the mistake. We need to go back to basics. We need to go back to how we started the season. We've we've used only the 27 players, Sainers, this season. You know, that's the, the fewest, I think, in the league. And to me, you know, in the first six weeks, players are fresh. They're fighting for spots that's not established. You go seven, eight, nine, ten games in now. And limited changes to the team, obviously hampered by injuries. Obviously, I'll, I'll um, I'll give Ross that. But I think some players probably could be guilty of getting a bit too comfortable in their positions. They know they're a lock. And now with players coming back, Webster, Gresh, King, Windy, Dan McKenzie only one to two weeks away as well. Um, I think that hopefully will give a few players a bit of a kick up the ass. You know that they know they're not guaranteed. And we had that edge in the first six weeks. New coach, players don't know if they will lock or not because he's got no favorites. Now we're getting to that point where maybe some players think they're favorites and they're getting a bit too comfortable. You know, they're playing their football a bit lightly. Um, and we need to get back to that sort of hardened edge where everyone's kind of playing with fear and anger that they don't know if they're going to get a game next week because I think that's the edge that we had in the first six weeks and we've lost that. So we need to get back to that. The Giants... We should be we should be accounting for them. You know, they've got some good players, but the way they play this year from what I've seen is they're playing a very aggressive style of football. They want to go through the middle um, at all costs and they want to get the ball moving very, very quickly. And obviously got a lot of players um, that are capable of doing that. But I think if our pressure's on, we can we can really kind of lock them down and, and get goals on the turnover. I don't think their defense is that good. They've conceded quite a high amount of scores, you know, 100 points to Sydney, 100 points to Collingwood, uh, 100 points to Brisbane, nearly 100 points to the Bombers, nearly 100, uh, 100 points to the Eagles as well, and nearly 100 points to Adelaide, even though they won that game. So they're conceding close to 13 goals a week this season, whereas, you know, last week hopefully is an outlier for us Um, because our defense has generally been very good and it's still number one in the comp. I think if we can tighten up, it's more sort of the midfield. If we can tighten up getting the ball there and using it and using it effectively, I think that'll go a long way to winning the game. And obviously having Max King back, it's going to be, you know, a big focus on what we do going inside 50 because it'll be, you know, it'll be enticing to just want it to bomb to him. But it's his first game back, so we're going to have to ease into it. He's not going to be the star player we're expecting from day dot. He's not going to kick 10 on Sunday, although I'd really like it if he did. Um, I want us to still use the, the other options that are available, and obviously Caminiti, Owens, um, no member this week, disappointingly, with the concussion protocol, but I still want us to be able to be unpredictable because that was one thing, again, in the first six weeks that gave us an edge was that unpredictability going inside 50. No one, no defense knew who was kicking goals. Now with King back, there's a bit more of a focus, but even then, Using him as a bit of a decoy, a bit of a distraction, going to Owens, Caminiti as well. It's going to be a good good viewing to watch Caminiti and um, King and Owens going at it together in the same forward line. So I'd like to think that we're getting the tools back. We're getting the um, that sort of power back into the team because we've missed that. You know, the last couple of weeks, um, we've really missed that key focus in the air and we haven't had that. And uh, we got away with it in the first six weeks with, again, like I said, that unpredictability. But now we've got King back, we've got the tools back, and hopefully that means we're going to get that that swagger and that energy back because um, this week to me is a refresh week. We've gone well, we've done well, six and three, we'll take that. But now we just, we make a few changes, we get that energy back, start the season from scratch again and um, and go from, you know, from... From the first quarter to the last quarter on Sunday and get the four points. And then we've got Hawthorne and then the buy, which I think it'll come at a really good time for us. If we can get these two wins, get the buy-in, I'll be very happy with uh, with our season. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts, Sainers. I'll wrap it up there. Let me know your thoughts going into this game. I think um, 
I really do think we should be getting the win here, you know, to be honest. I think if we play our best football or anything that's been better than the last two weeks, I think we should win. Toby Green's obviously going to lift the GWS Giants. He always does. Um, but outside of him and, and maybe one or two other players, I think we should have the Giants covered across the board. It's really just up to us to minimize clangers, maximize our shots on goal, which again, we haven't done in the last couple of weeks. And I think that should give us a win. I don't know what the margin could be. If it's a point, it doesn't matter. We just need to get the win, get back on the winner's list, get to seven and three, and then move on to Hawthorne. Um, quick note on the game as well for Sunday. We're at the Bentley Social from three o'clock. The Saints TV disco is back. There's going to be prizes. Um, obviously, the game on big screen, Saints TV Lager on tap. So get down. There's an event on Facebook. Make sure you RSVP. And if you don't have Facebook and you're watching this, just put in the comments. Let me know that you're coming along so we can make sure we've got the right amount of numbers ready to go. And uh, yeah, after that, I'll be back on Sunday, Sainers, to talk about the game, post-game review as always. So hopefully then we'll be talking about a win. So I'll leave it there, Sainers. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, go you mighty Sainers. See you guys.